This is Dr. Matt Barber of Alabama Orthopedic Clinic. We are proud supporters of Ransom Reprogram, Ransom Ministries, and all of the good work that they do in our community. If you would like to learn more about us, check us out at alortho.com or barbertotaljoint.com. You can also hear more from me personally on the Ortho Real podcast. Thank you again for allowing us to be involved with Ransom Ministries and all of the great work that they do. Hey, welcome to the Ransom Experience. My name is Matt Armbruster, Executive Director of Ransom Ministries. You're going to hear stories from people that we've served and people that serve alongside us, as well as those that we partner with throughout our community. You're going to hear about decisions they made throughout their life and things that happened through different avenues of their life that caused them to go down a path that they didn't see themselves going. And then also those decisions that they have to make on a daily basis to stay away from those decisions that they made in the past. Ransom Ministries empowers people to utilize their God-given gifts and talents in their career and for their community. All along the way, we learn how to help those close to us and also maybe even help ourselves. This is real. This is raw. This is Ransom. This show is brought to you by Ransom Recycling, your number one choice for electronic recycling in Mobile, Alabama. Help reduce waste in our landfills by recycling all of your unwanted, unused, and non-working electronics. Ransom Recycling is a division of Ransom Ministries that is helping to put men and women back to work. Check out RansomMinistries.com for a complete list of acceptable items. Drop-offs and pickups can be easily scheduled through the website. Please note that we are not accepting TVs at this time. Ransom Recycling, open 8 to 3, Monday through Friday. Help our planet while helping men and women re-enter the workforce. With every star, we are born again. Oh, in your heart, spend less time in your head. Hey, welcome to the Ransom Experience, where we bring real people with real stories and they just tell us kind of how it was growing up and how it was when they were an adult. And then there, there are people that have been through our program, but also just people that we've met along the way, whether it be volunteers or whatever. So today I'm joined by Summer, who um, I met through our Ransom Reprogram, through our partnership with the Home of Grace. So thanks for coming on the show today. Thank you for having me, Matt. All right. So what do we normally do, Summer, is that we ask you kind of tell me a little bit about summer when she was younger a kid where you grew up all that kind of stuff well i grew up in baldwin county in robert still um my family uh they're very loving i was raised by my grandparents um grew up on 200 acres um out in the woods always had four wheelers horses all kinds of animals and i spent most of my time just out in the woods catching these animals yeah see i know you like the, you love animals yes and it don't matter if they're wild or tame or what Mm-mm. now i've had a squirrel a coyote and a skunk all live together before so really? all my animals have always gotten along in a big house so 200 acres that's a lot of a lot of land you like i guess you don't hunt since you i do hunt you do even though you yes. like wild animals that much and i like to eat them too <laughs> <laughs> i love it so i love to hunt too and I lo- i'd love to live on 200 acres first of all so as a kid you kind of grew up just living outside do- having fun doing the things you do and so you went to school in robertsdale i went I to school from kindergarten and graduated from robertsdale high school okay so tell me a little bit about your teenage years i mean i grew up on a farm and i and i eventually got to the point where i didn't want to be out there you know um, I always enjoyed it. I hung around with a variety of kids. I didn't have just one group. Um, uh, rode horses through high school. Um, actually rode my horse to school before. <laughs> <laughs> um, and my grandparents were my world. They were really, really good to me. I grew up in a lot in a pecan house. They did um, pecan wholesale and were, uh-huh. um, around tractor trailers and forklifts and stuff. And it's just a, I had a great childhood. Yeah. It's a lot of fun. So you went to high school. So then after high school, what did you do? 
After high school, I started working for my grandfather's real estate business. Okay. And I worked there, and I worked at a little um, country cook and a little, um, like, meat and tea vegetable type place. Okay. I worked there for a couple years. All right. So you didn't go to college. No. You uh, just went to work. Just it seemed went. like you liked to work. That's what I noticed about yes, you. Yes, I do it. like to work. <laughs> and so you worked there. So then as you got older, maybe 20s, then what was going on? Um, well, I met a boy. Mm-hmm. And I was I was the kid that did not like drugs, did not like anything to do with them. And um, when the friends were doing it, I would pretend like I was doing it because I just did not like it. But over the years, I got worn down. And as I started doing them, I started liking them more. And it became, it got to where it wasn't by choice. You know, I was forced to do them, it felt like. You know, they just drew me in. And I went to the Home of Grace in Robertsdale when it was open and realized I had a problem with drugs, so I quit doing those. Graduated and turned into an alcoholic. thought that was the that, – since that wasn't your that DOC, wasn't my, right? Right. Then I can, I can do, do that. It. I've heard that many times, though, by yeah. the way. Yeah. Is it like, well, I can drink because that really wasn't my thing, but – Mm-hmm. It's all an addictive personality. It's like when it starts doing it, and that feeling is kind of the same thing. It's right. just maybe not as intense with one or the other, but it's still the same feeling. So the one thing you said is that I met a boy, right? Which yes. is probably a lot of times the story is that I met somebody and they, I liked them. I wanted to hang out with them. So it caused me to feel like I had to do that in order to fit in or whatever. Um, because it seemed it seemed like like when you was a kid, I mean, you were you, you were good being who you were. Exactly. You know? Yes. And a lot of times, drugs. Those out there probably listen and understand that sometimes drugs are a cover up for how we feel about ourselves. But you seem like you had a pretty good. I had handle a great on who you were. Yes. You know? Yes, and you know, I would wear the funky clothes to school, and I did. I wasn't a type of person that cared if you made fun of me or not. Yeah. Yeah. And then. But then when you get in with a certain group of people and you do want to fit in, then you'll do whatever. Even like you said, even to the point of acting like you're doing it. Right, you know? right. And eventually you started doing it. Started. Then you got there. So you, so you went to the Home of Grace. That, that was when? when? When was that? That was in 2005. 2005. So then you got into drinking. Yes, after Why, why that. do you feel like you went into drinking after you left? Um... I got, I got, when I got home from the home of grace, I found crystal meth in my house three different times. And it really discouraged me, but I knew I hated that drug because I'd gotten away from that stuff. But my husband had, was, was still doing it and I had no idea he was doing it uh, until I found it and I found it in his car and I found it in his pants pocket when I was washing his clothes. Uh, and I just drank to kind of shut out reality that he was doing that because it was very hurtful because at that time I just lost my sister to um, a drug addiction and she had mixed uppers and downers and a beautiful girl she was runner up in the Miss Alabama and she was beautiful and uh, she was my best friend also so it just crushed me to lose her and then for him to be sneaking drugs in our home that she had died off of um, I just thought it was better to drink alcohol than to do crystal meth. Okay. So just kind of made it easier. Yes. Made life easier to deal with the it situation. Did. Absolutely. Because, so you guys were married mm-hmm. and he worked, I guess. He worked. He worked, he worked for my grandfather's real estate business. Okay. He worked, um, like we flip, um, do land home packages and we'll, um, buy trailers and move them onto the land, put, um, well and septic in. And he would come in and remodel the trailers. Okay. All right. Cool. So, so this was in two thousand six, seven. About about that, that, yeah. All right. So y'all kind of just went through that life for how long? How long do you think? You went uh, well, we were together since I was about sixteen. Yeah. So we got married in two thousand five, two thousand six. Mm-hmm. So, and I stayed with him till two thousand and. 10 i okay. tried to stick through it all right but he just he wasn't changing yeah so then you realized this thing ain't gonna work moved on I actually i moved to <clears throat> north georgia 
to get away from all this. But then my drinking, you know, just heartbreak over losing my home, everything. I felt like I'd worked for, I'd lost. Um, and so my drinking really took off in 2010. When you were in Georgia? Uh-huh. So you moved to Georgia and then kind of, when did you head back this way? I came back here in 2015, end of 2015, right. almost 2016. So you'd been drinking like that for like five years. Oh, bad drinking, yeah. yes. Like five yes. years. So so then you're here 2015. What did you do when you came back here? Came back here. I went back to work for my family's real estate business. Um, and then 2017, I came to the home of Grace in okay. Mobile. Okay. So 2017, you were there for 90 days. Yes, I stayed at the grad dorm until 2018. Which is funny because, you know, we started doing Ransom Reprogram in 2018. I know. I brought I brought girls here to work for. Really? Yes. Oh, well, that's funny. But I never came in. I just, you know, ended up dropping them off outside. So you were here up. right before Angela and them? Mm, right before, right yes. Before, I, I was leaving as she was coming in. Okay, so you went that time, and then where where did you go after that? Then I went back. I, I, after a year, I went back home, um, and then um, started off smoking smoking a little pot here and there, and then started off doing a couple of Xanaxes here and there, and then that just definitely led me back to drinking. And it was so you know, each time that I relapsed, it's been worse. But this last time, because I think this prayer saved me when I was at the home of grace to say, God, please. You know, if I fall off, let it be so bad that and and just don't let go of me, though. But I I remember praying that prayer at the home of grace walking down the hill. Mm -hmm. And it was so bad. It when I have when I think about that time in my life, especially the couple months before I came back to the home of grace, it's just it's just blackness. Yeah, it's awful. It's the, the for me, it's the worst that I can imagine. And that's what it was. Um. God took away my grandmother, which was the closest person in the world to me. He took away my aunt, which she was also very close to me. Um, took my house away. Took everything away from me this time. And and the people I was closest to have been taken away from me. And that's bad in a way, but it also made it to where I looked at the home of grace different. I was a different person when I came in. I lived each day. I did not get out of each day. I stayed each, each day in each day. Yeah. And, you know, I'm, I... I've thought to myself, well, the program's changed, but I changed because I had a different view coming into this program this time. Yeah, and that's a huge thing because I've seen, you know, people always wonder, well, how can they keep falling back? How can they keep relapsing? How they, well, well, it's because they have to get to a point, like you said, like where there ain't no going no other place. I mean, right. you can't I had go to have to everything that. taken away from me. And growing up, um, you know, my grandparents, my family had money and stuff, so I never had any real consequences to relapse and, and stuff because I was always gotten out of things. Well, now I don't have any more family yeah. and the ones I do have are not people that I'm, you know, today that I want to be around right now. Yeah. So just having everything taken away from me has, has changed my life. And I just, I wouldn't have it any other way because I love my life now. I, I appreciate my life now and I've never been happier than I am right now. That's great. That is awesome to see because you know, a lot of times we as parents or whatever, parents out there, they want to make it easy for our kids. Yes. And yes. like you just talked about, that making it easy made it worse. Made it worse for me. Yeah, because yeah. we go, we don't, if not having any consequences, we live longer in that life. Yeah, because you know they're going to bail me out. They're going to do this yeah. for me. They're going to do whatever. So I think it's cool that you can look at it now and know that, you ask God almost is to to bring me to a point where everything's gone. Yes, if that, if yes that, I did. Like make it so bad, but just don't let go of me. Yeah. I like that person. <laughs> just don't let go of me. Because you knew that he's the only one you really needed. The other stuff could get, get through. But I think I think watching you now, so you've been, you came to, um, now you went to Ransom Reprogram. You went through that with Angela now leading it, which is kind of cool that you, came in right you left there that time right before she got there mm -hmm. and now three years later she's running the program and you're in it with her and i think that that meant a lot to her but also to you probably Absolutely. so tell me what what you the biggest takeaway you got out of reprogram biggest takeaway would be 
probably like the, the mock interviews, just realizing that I don't have to be that nervous to go yeah. to an, to an interview. And, and uh, the volunteers pouring into us about how much God loves us, reprogramming our brain so that we can really, I know we won't all ever be able to fully grasp that, but just to be able to say, well, I'm worth saving, yeah. not just, you know, not just to my, my, child but i'm worth saving to all these other people think that i'm worth saving i'm gonna cry right now (laughs) (laughs) because that's true though i mean you have you have to get to the point where you realize that you're worth that right and you know it really made me realize that who i am because i can go to my bible and i've got it all highlighted and i read out these affirmations almost every day to myself what i am and what god thinks of me and just makes my day great yeah well so after you graduated there I asked you, hey, you, we're, we're open this new resale shop and um, also do need some admin help. And would you be interested in coming in that? Because it's kind of the next step for there. And I wanted to get you some training in admin and we're going to try to work more on that. But also retail, you're very personable. You're very organized. You stay busy. You like to do those things. So you've kind of helped me, not kind of, you have really got this off the ground where we could get the thrift store going, which is another theater of work for us to kind of get a place for people to be plugged in for a period of time so they can learn how to work, make a little bit of money, learn what to do with their money, all those different things, and then carry it on to a better job down the road, not stay here forever, but use it as a stepping stone to get to where they want. So I do appreciate that. So what does it mean to you to kind of get back over there kind of working again? Well, it hasn't thrown me right out into the world, which I didn't need that because being in the home of grace, um, especially if you're like me, you didn't watch any news or anything like that. You just focused on every day there and what you could get out of it. It's been a gradual step back into the real world, and I appreciate that. Yeah, It's like a transition. It's very much, yeah. The first one is like when we bring the y'all ladies over from there, my thing was, I want them to come here because then they're getting away from the home of grace for just a period of time, back out into the world a little bit, kind of putting that, you know, toe in the water yeah, and get over here. And then that's what the whole social enterprises are about, our recycling, whether that be there or um, in the thrift store or in our staffing company is that, hey, let's still stay in contact and maybe not give you a $20 an hour job Mm -hmm. so that you don't have $20 an hour where you have all this money that you can do what you want, but just give you enough to kind of get back into the swing of things and hope. And I, and I've seen you grow even in the short period of time from the day one you started, you know, right with us. So, um, I'm looking forward to see where God takes you. You're you're an amazing individual. You're fun to be around. You're, and I, I just, um, love watching you grow. Well, thank you. I appreciate everything y'all have done for us. It's awesome. Well, and and it, and it is a, it's a it's a process. All this stuff's a process, and a lot of times we fall, we mess mess up. And some guy told me the other day, he said, "It's it's never really about how you fall because everybody falls. Right. It's about how you get back up." Yes. And yes, I see yes. you're getting back up, and you're doing what you're supposed to do. So I appreciate it. Hopefully, you guys enjoyed my talk with summer thanks for coming on oh, the program. thank you for having me and uh we hope you'll tune in every week when we bring you different stories and we also hope that you will um subscribe to our podcast share it with your friends go on to our website ransomministries.com and you can find out more about what we do and how to get involved and also check us out on all the social medias we keep you up and then come shop with us um at uh 320 Southcraft Highway at our thrift store. And we also will be having a fundraiser for uh, during Christmas. We'll be selling smoked hams for $45 for an 8 to 10 pound ham. You can order those on our website as well. Thank you. And until next week, we'll see you next week. Too many days in the darkness without a glimpse of the light. Running tired and broken and scared, but I swear I'll never give up the fight. With it.